everyone for being here. Welcome to the very first Tuesdays with Terry. I am coming to you live from my living room. This is also right now the headquarters for the Harlem Candle Company. And I'm just so excited that you're all here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, Louis from London. Wow, wow, wow. This is just oh, spectacular. Um, I really wanted to do this and just to say one that you know, I'm here right in New York City, and yes, there's, uh, we are the epicenter of what's happening, um, but there's still always time to find a little ways to spread love and positivity and joy. And I actually want to start this whole Instagram Live today with a quote by Maya Angelou, whose birthday was just this past Saturday, um, and it's very, very simple, very simple quote. Be a rainbow in somebody's cloud. And I feel like this is the perfect time for us to think about someone who's having a really hard time with everything that's going on. Think about what you can do or what you can say to be a rainbow in that person's cloud. Um, you can give something, send something, text, whatever it is that you think will resonate well with that person. Just remember to do that. It, it takes not very much time. As you just heard, we were playing Billie Holiday in the background. Today is her birthday. So let's toast to Billy. Virtual toast. I'm drinking a little Savion Blanc. Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so excited. All of these people are joining and talking about their candles. So we are toasting to Billy. And in honor of her birthday, we are giving everyone 15% off of all of our holiday candles. So we have a holiday candle burning right now. 15% off, enter code BILLY15 at checkout. And so we have this candle, we have another version with the nightclub map, and we also have the holiday reed diffuser. And so of course, the holiday candle, well yeah. So our Billy holiday candle is inspired by her favorite perfume, but it also has fragrance notes that are perfect for the holiday season. So there's some cedar wood, there's some pine needle, there's some hyacinth and some eucalyptus. So it's really delicious and it's the holiday candle that people love all year round. Okay, so this is our very first Tuesdays with Terry, and we are going to start it out just by asking me questions. So this is the Ask Me Anything AMA. Uh, we do have some questions that have already come through, so I'm going to start there. And if everyone just wants to think about their questions, and when I take a break or when you see me kind of looking at the screen, then you can add your additional questions. Okay, let's get started. Why did you start the Harlem Candle Company? That is a, a question that I get quite often. I, it it kind of just happened. So I really love beautiful fragrances, I always have. And I was a huge consumer of luxury candles for many years. And I happened to meet a perfumer here in Harlem, based here. And I walked into his store and I went, I went nuts. He had so many different perfume and fragrance oils lining the walls and they allowed me to smell every single one of them. So I'm smelling ylang ylang for the first time. I'm smelling all of these like pure, pure, beautiful fragrances for the first time. And so I became friends with him. I would say maybe fast forward a year, I told him I wanted to make candles for Christmas gifts. So he made a, about six or so different fragrance oils for me to experiment with candles and I made about 50 of them in my kitchen and I gifted them to friends and family. I branded it, I called it, um, I called my candles La Maison des Bougies de Terry, Terry's House of Candles, which I thought was really cute because it had that little like French cachet to it. Uh, but unfortunately, like no one liked the, the name, so I changed it. Um, and I was like, well, hmm, I think I really like doing this and I think I want to start selling them at these like artisan and pop-up markets. So I decided to call it the Harlem Candle Company because I was making them here in my Harlem kitchen. And when I was able to trademark the name, I realized that, okay, that name comes with a huge responsibility. And that responsibility is to pay homage to the greats, like Billie Holiday, like James Baldwin, like Langston Hughes and Duke Ellington. So that's kind of how the Harlem Candle Company was born. And um, I should have this picture handy, but one kind of tip, like side note, I had no idea that my grandfather and Duke Ellington knew each other. Um, this is maybe a, a year after I started the business. I found a picture of my grandfather and Duke Ellington. 
And my grandfather is like from Tallahassee, Florida. So it's not like he's in the jazz and the music scene here. He was a political science professor um, at Florida A&M. Shout out to FAMU. Um, so yeah, so that's why I started the Harlem Candle Company. And you know, thankfully, people here in Harlem, New York City, and around the world have really embraced the brand. They've helped me grow. They've been super, you, you guys have been super, super, super supportive. I'm, I'm just so grateful because, you know, it's not, this brand has never been about me, which is why I've, I've always been a little bit hesitant in doing something like this. But I realize that it is important for me, the founder of the business, to kind of talk to you and tell you a little bit more about why and how and, and if there's anything that I can do to help. You know, if I can give you some tips about, you know, if you're starting your own business or um, if I can give you any tips or any inspiration, um, I would, I'm here. So, okay. So there's probably a lot of questions that have come through. Love and Ellington are next. Oh, oh, I love this. Oh, very proud of you. Thank you, mermaid. Oh, I'm a mermaid too, I'm a Pisces. Um, beautiful, okay. Uh, one of the other questions that came in is, what is your business background? That is a really, really great question, and <laughs> it's a little all over the place. So I, I do have an MBA from Florida a and um, I used to do management consulting with Accenture back in the day. And then I did marketing for this really small um, boutique marketing agency and making films and, and telling stories through film and video and launched uh, a, a show called Travelista, which a lot of people probably know me from Travelista which was all about travel, culture, and lifestyle around the world. And so I did Travelista, and where I was, you know, producer, director, writer, host, editor, wearing all the hats. Um, and then I decided to kind of transition into um, storytelling through fragrance and through beautiful brands and packaging and such. So that's a little bit about my background. Um, I don't have a, like, I, I, I'm not a perfume, I don't, I, I don't have a chemistry degree not a perfumer. I work with some of the best perfumers and we're actually going to do a Tuesdays with Terry with one of the best perfumers in the world. I'm excited about that. So yeah, I work with really fantastic perfumers who are actual chemists who come from, you know, generations of perfumery and who really have such amazing secrets. And they know just how to put those really addictive, you know, beautiful notes that just blend so well together. And they also do an incredible job at being able to tell the story, you know, telling the story of Josephine Baker's boudoir in a fragrance, you know, to get people really excited about it and to make them feel like they're in their own boudoir. So that's kind of the goal. For those of you who might not know, the, um, all of the candles are inspired by either an iconic person or a place in Harlem. So Josephine Baker, in, fa in fact, we used her boudoir is inspiration. So we have Moroccan rose in the candle. We have um, Indian jasmine. We have some very beautiful powder and ambery notes that are just kind of seductive and a little tantalizing. Um, our newest, we have one called Speakeasy. That is mm, notes of bourbon and a little Palo Santo. But we really do like to take a lot of those symbols that were very you know, inspirational in the, the person's life, like Langston Hughes is a big, smoker he loved his tobacco so we put some really beautiful tobacco notes he also spent a lot of time in Mexico and these going to these really small candlelit churches in Mexico and he loved the incense burning so we put some incense notes in there and so we've really just been very thoughtful about how we're approaching every single fragrance um, to really you know bring the essence of that person into your home so okay one of the other questions okay Ooh, Nailu, hi! Shop Nailu, okay, so this is a, a store in Harlem. It is the number one gift store in New York City. Uh, so when everything is back up and running, you have to visit Shop Nailu. We have a lot of our products there. And it's just a wonderful neighborhood spot. Um, oh, it's so wonderful to see all these beautiful people. Uh, oh, no way, Dominic. Okay, so the, per the perfumer who created uh, Langston just joined. I was just talking about you. I was just talking about the um, the Langston the Langston fragrance that people. I cannot. I mean, it is like I think it might be the number one seller. It is so beautiful. It's and we actually did the launch party for the Langston candle. Here it is. We did the launch party for the Langston candle at the home where Langston Hughes lived in Harlem, 
It was a super special night. Actor Harry Lennox was uh, performing uh, Langston Hughes poetry. It was just a perfect night, and Langston's spirit was there. You can feel it. You can feel it. You can feel it. Okay. Another question. Oh, <laughs> this is a question I've gotten a bunch. Um, I've been following you and your travels around the world with Travelista. Um, are you still doing it? And if not, uh, why did you stop? Uh, so I, of course, I love travel. I will always love travel. I was able to build, you know, this really cool brand and travel. I've been to 69 different countries. I've been able to travel the world and do really cool storytelling and create a really great content. I kind of fell out of love with always having to be on and always having to create content and get the shot and do this and do that. And I felt like I just wasn't being as present, which is what made me love travel so much, where I'm really just connecting with the people and learning so much about the culture. And I wanted, I just felt like it was time to do something a little bit different. And I also wanted to, to create something outside of me. Because with Travelista, it was about me being in front of the camera, being in this destination, being on this beach, being in this place and, and talking about it and doing a lot of like, you know, really cool inspirational videos. But I wanted to do something that wasn't about me, that really celebrated culture and celebrated people who were great. Um, which is how I feel like it was kind of a destiny that uh, led me here to create this brand and to be able to carry on the legacy of these, these wonderful artists and writers and, and performers. So, yeah, so I will always be Travelista. I own the trademark, so anyone trying to infringe on that, watch out. Um, yeah, so Travelista is great. Uh, I think traveling around the world is fantastic. We can't really do it right now. Um, but I, I will have to say a lot of my ideas about fragrance have been inspired um, by, you know, the, the things I've experienced around the world, like, mm, like the Plumeria in Hawaii and the Frangipani in Bali. Like, there's so many beautiful, beautiful fragrances that I, I've, uh, I've been exposed to, so, which has been really fun. Um, oh, Carmina. Oh, Carmina. I love you, Carmina. I haven't seen you in forever. Nick. Hi, Nick. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> what has been your biggest challenge in building your business? That answer changes depending on the day. Um, biggest challenge, my biggest challenge has probably been not having enough help. Um, when I first started this business, I was doing pretty much everything by myself. I was making all the candles, packing and shipping all the candles, doing all the social media, um, Trying to do my own product photography, Pfft, never again. Um, I, there's like I, I work with like the, she is the best, the best. Um, but just not not having enough help, and it, thankfully I'm in a position now where I can afford to pay people um, to come on board and to help with this, help with graphic design. I'm I work with I think she's the best graphic designer out there, and. I'm also very protective over her because she's very serious about what she does. When I went to her, I'm just going to tell you this quick story. When I um, went to her, because I also knew that she was she's expensive, I'm like, okay, how much are you per hour? Ooh, that's a lot. So let me be as prepared as possible. I think I had maybe a 15-page PowerPoint deck that had every single idea, all of my inspiration mapped out when it came to label design when it came to logo, when it came to just the way that I wanted things to be laid out in the packaging, the inside of the box. I wanted the inside of the box to tell a story. All of the little details. So I had all of this stuff very organized and it's been like the biggest pleasure to work with someone like her. Her name is Nadine. There's two Nadines. There's a Nadine the photographer and Nadine the graphic designer. But it's been the biggest pleasure to work with someone just so talented who gets it. So. A piece of advice for anyone who is either starting a brand um, or who wants to to do something where it looks and feels good, don't try to do it on your own if you don't have design skills. Create the concepts just so people can understand where you where your vision, but don't work with a professional because people ask me all the time, "Wow, did you design this?" It was my idea, but I had an expert bring it to life. 
Um, so invest in that if you are really serious about building your business or creating something that's really beautiful that you want people to respond well to. Because the worst thing is to have an incredible product and your packaging is like, yeah, because it just, it's a bad reflection. People are going to think that the quality is not good if your packaging isn't good. So if you are thinking about something in a more high-end premium, premium or luxury space, think about make, uh, having nice packaging and telling a story with your packaging. There's a st we have a story on the back of the box. We have the Harlem Spot Gloss H going all around. We have principles we love to live by, love, live, give, joy, light, life. And then we have the nightclub map of Harlem on the inside of the box. We have a, a stuff in French and English for people who don't speak English. We thought about all of that stuff. Okay. Um, next question. Oh, I'm so right. Thank you. Hola. Oh, Daniel. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. So many of my friends are here. Oh, I love this. Hi, Lawrence. Okay. Um, another question that I've been getting. If Harlem Candle Company had a Spotify playlist, who would be on it? Oh, that is so funny you say that, that you asked that question because we have a few Spotify playlists. In fact, we have a Billie Holiday playlist, which I encourage everyone to download. It's so good. Um, it's a mix of like, there's a little Etta James, there's some Billie Holiday, a little Josephine Baker, a little Edith Piaf. It's beautiful and it's very well done. Um, so I would say, yeah, we have Spotify playlists. We also have uh, Spotify playlists that set the mood. And if you know what I mean by set the mood, play one of those playlists and see, and, and, and report back. Light a candle while you do it, but like report back because yeah, we have some good playlists. Um, how do you balance when you follow advice of others and when to follow your gut instincts? Okay, hmm, that, and that's a great question. Follow the advice of others and gut instinct. And you have to sit sometimes, you have to sit with, with, those, with those questions and see how you feel. Like if there, is there a tightness that happens in your chest or in your throat? Or in your body, if you really pay attention, if you sit still long enough, you'll be able to pay attention to, to understand how things feel. And it really, really does have to feel right. And if it doesn't feel right, then you know your answer. You don't have to ask a bunch of people. Just sit with it. Um, and your instincts, your instincts are never really wrong. So I really encourage people to always follow their gut intuition. And there's gonna be a lot of people in your life whether it's family members or close friends who might not necessarily agree or don't believe in your vision or don't understand it. Make sure that you surround yourself by people who do, who support you, who believe in you, and who encourage you to do something outside of your comfort zone that makes you happy, that makes you feel really, really, really good. Another thing that I would also mention is, oh, we have another question to you. How did you go about building a team for your business? Um, that has been a process. It really, really has been a process. Um, I've had interns over the years. I've had an intern now, you know, or she was more of a um, apprentice. She's now running our social media. Um, it's important to find people who are, I think, similar to you. So people who aren't afraid of hard work. I, I don't mind working hard. Um, I know what it's like to work on a team. I used, I used to play basketball. I wasn't good. I sat the bench, but I, I used to play basketball. I used to run track. So I know what it's like to be on a team and in a team environment where we all want to win. And finding other people who have that same sort of mentality, like we all want to win. So what can I do? What can you do? And what can she do? And what can he do? To where collectively we're all going to win. Um, so just finding people who have similar um, ideas when it, when it comes to achievement and success. And how and, and how that feels and how that feels to them. So I I, I typically like people who have have been athletes um, because I have that same sort of spirit and energy. Like let's go, let's get it, let's go. Um, okay, I love what you're doing. What are two things you would suggest if you are new to building a brand? Oh, that's a great question. New to building a brand, um, figure out what your niche is. So what is it that is going to set you apart from all of the competition? So what stories do you have to tell? For me, it was, well, I called it the Harlem Candle Company, so I have a, a natural you know, kind of environment to tell cool stories. Um, but I think it's important to figure out what your niche is. How are you gonna set yourself apart? Is it gonna be something that's very focused in um, 
you know, whether it's like something with, with mission driven or is it going to be something that is more um, focused in a certain demographic. So I think it's, and then also just hire a professional to help you with your design and your look. Just do it. Just do it. Um, thanks for your honesty. Oh, okay. Oh, you're welcome. Hi, everyone. Oh, I'm so happy to see all these wonderful people. Thank you. We all want to win. That's right, Scott. We all want to win. Oh, this is good. Um, you would love to see a Hazel Scott luxury candle. Hazel Scott. Oh, wow. Um, I will do some research. There's a long list. There's a long list, but I will do some research um, to see if that is something that we can do. Um, if you are truly building a brand, please make sure you protect it with a trademark. That's right. That's right. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I have I have trademarks that you don't even know about yet. I'm just intent to use because I'm always thinking of like, hmm, I could do this, I could do that. Right now I'm very busy running this business, but it is so important that I'm so happy you said that. Um, how do you balance artistic sensibility and business? Ooh. Hmm, you're asking some uh, challenging questions. <laughs> artistic sensibility. I, I think it's important to do, the, do those kind of creative things that you aren't good at. So I'm not good at painting. I would love to be a lot better at painting. I have a lot of appreciation for people who are very talented painters but I still do it. I have a whole acrylic set, I got canvas. I still do it. I still do it and I have fun with it. Um, it's freeing, it's therapeutic. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's important to do those things that are outside of your comfort zone and also do things that you've never done before. So this frame behind me, um, I got this for the Architectural Digest Design Show in 2018. We get the frame there and I drop it. This is a 19th century frame, it's very fragile. So this bottom section here cracked, it crumbled into pieces. And I had to take it home and I, uh, I, I put it back together. Never done anything like that before. I watched a few videos. Thank God I already, already had um, some gesso paste and some, some gold leaf things. I had those things already. And I, I, me and my friend Marina, we put it back together. Doing things with your hands I think is always really good. I love creating and doing and candles and all that. So I think doing things with your hands is, is really important as well. Um, love that you put it, yeah, that you have a trademark, put, yep. Who's the bubbleista? I don't know who you are, but I like you. <laughs> um, yeah, there's like some brands out there, like some legit brands that I see. I don't just like Google in the USPTO, like I'll go to the website. So USPTO, I think it's .gov, the US Patent and Trademark Office. You can, you can search to see uh, if something is registered in a trademark. And it's also very important, if you have an inkling that you might want to expand into other categories beyond, for me, oh, this is a story, okay, I'll go back to that. If you have any idea that you might want to expand beyond, let's just say candles, then you need to think about, don't just register your trademark in the category for candles and soaps and lotions, go beyond candle soaps and lotions. But you have to be thinking about that because you can build a brand like Travelista, for instance. I had the, the Travelista trademark in video, TV, film, anything dealing with any online video streaming, I had that trademark. I did not have the Travelista trademark when it came to candles, soap, lotion, beauty. I didn't have it. So I went to register because I'm like, hmm, I'm doing the Harlem Candle Company. I might as well get the, the trademark for the Travelista. Someone was squatting on it with the intent to use on a name that I had built, you know, I'd been working with this name for years. And it was really disheartening because they weren't, it was some law firm. They weren't going to ever use it. They just wanted me to pay them for it, which I didn't. And I waited them out. And guess who owns the trademark for Travelista now? I do, for the category for candles. So if you see a Travelista candle line pop up, it's me. <laughs> okay. Oh, she used to work for the USPTO. That's why you get to encourage all your people. Oh, wonderful. Oh, you could probably give us some really good tips. Oh, you might be someone good to interview for the Tuesdays with Terry. Okay, let me just um, answer one last question that's here because I see it's already about 7.30. And then I have um, a contest 
And I really, really, really hope someone gets this answer right because you will win something super special and I will personally send it to you. Okay, one of the questions, how do you come up with the fragrances? So I have the ideas. I do tons of research on the person, on the time period, and but I work with really, really talented and incredible perfumers. They do a lot of the, the fine fragrances for Givenchy and Jo Malone and Estee Lauder. They do all these beautiful fragrances. And I give them my ideas. And so it's a little bit like of research. And what they do is they do their own set of research, but they are actual chemists. They know which fragrance notes are going to blend well together. They are the ones who are responsible for mixing the top, the middle, and the base notes and making everything just mm, take you on this whole journey. So um, that is more or less how we come up with the fragrances. Okay, it's 7.30 and so we're gonna wrap up. But I have a quote. I'm gonna say this quote and whoever answers who the author of this quote was will win okay so this quote that i'm about to tell you is very short it's very simple but i need you to tell me who from the harlem renaissance said this the first person who says this wins okay the quote goes like this i wasn't really naked i just wasn't wearing any clothes who said it i wasn't really naked I just wasn't wearing any clothes. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, don't Google it. Y'all are Googling it. Langston, no, Langston not, Langston Hughes didn't say that. Come on, Nick. No, Langston Hughes did Josephine Baker, you got it. Ah, Josephine Baker, you got it. Oh gosh, okay, wait. Don't sleep in. Okay, so yeah, that's who got it. Josephine Baker, that's right, where's where's my girl? Oh, I had a picture. That's right, Josephine Baker said it. She wasn't really naked, she just wasn't wearing any clothes. Okay, so you're gonna have to send us your um, full name and your shipping address so we can mail you your Josephine candle and change your life. All right, thank you guys, thank you so much. And remember to be the rainbow in somebody else's cloud, especially with everything that's going on. And just figure out what you can do to just be a blessing to someone. And we will be back here live on Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday, um, for Tuesdays with Terry. Please be sure to share it with your friends. We're gonna be doing this. We, we have some really good guests, some really good guests. We're, so this was just me. It's not only gonna be just me, um, but we're gonna talk to some people who are just awesome, okay? Until next time. Bye. Make sure you're following us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn.